Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Let's go ahead and wrap up the month of March and I'll go ahead and start off with what I am still currently reading that what I'm bringing over from the month of March into April and I'll start with Return to a Dan by Philip Chase. This has been a great book so far. I just hit the 50% mark and I'm finally really starting to get to make some progress on this. Dead House Gates took up so much of my mental capacity for reading and just so much time that I kind of put a lot of things on the back burning when it came to reading including this book which sucks because I was enjoying it so much and am still very much enjoying it. So I'm hoping I can finish this very early in April and finish out this trilogy. I am also still reading Empire of the Dan by Jay Kristoff. I started this and so far it has been great. It is more of the same from Empire of the Vampire, which I mean in the best possible way. Really when I got into this book, I just wanted more of what I had already read with just a few things maybe being expanded upon. And so far I'm getting exactly what I wanted. The world has slightly widened, but we are basically back with the same characters we had in the first book and I'm really enjoying that. Not too far into it but hopefully this will be another book that I finish very early on in April. So now let's go ahead and move on to the books that I did finish in the month of March and unfortunately that was only two books. Like I said Dead House Gates took up so much of my time effort. I mean it took me an entire month to read. I started that on February 19th and finished it on March 19th. So a full month of reading that book. Very slow burn. It took me a a very long time to get into it. I didn't really enjoy a whole lot of that book. You can get my full thoughts in my review, but it really took me until like the last quarter or so of the book to really be invested. And as I get further and further away from the book, I realize that I enjoyed it a lot more than I did at the time. Uh, I have described this book as type two kind of fun where after you're done with it, after you finally conquer that mountain, that challenge, you look back on it and realize how much you enjoyed it at the time. And that has been my experience with Dead House Gates. I have gone back and watched some really awesome videos uh, that kind of get deeper into the story. And that has also really helped my enjoyment of it going back. And it's one of those books where the more I talk about it, the more I realize how much awesome stuff happened in it and just how good of an author Steven Erickson is. He has absolutely blown me away with the two books I have read by him and he really is just a, a master writer. He is something else. I see why people hold him up on such a high pedestal. The only other author that I think is maybe even close to him in a lot of aspects that I have personally read is somebody like Jenny Wirtz or a George R.R. R. Martin, but even then he is something special and I'm very much looking forward to moving on to the rest of Malazan here soon. I did give Dead House Gates three stars, which for me means I did enjoy it in the end, though there for a little while it definitely was teetering on a two-star ranking. But that brings me to the only other book I finished in March and fortunately for me this is my first five-star read of the year. So if you don't know I'm very tough when it comes to ranking books. I would say most of the time a book I give four star would be a five star for a lot of people. Just for reference, I have only given now 17 five stars since I kept track of my reading starting in 2019. And that book that got that five star ranking is All the Pretty Horses by Cormac McCarthy. I'll be doing a review for this soon, so I won't get too in depth here, but I will say that this was an absolute surprise. I kind of picked this up on a whim. I saw that it was a short book. I saw Mike from Mike's Fantasy Book Reviews really talking about or talking about it and how he enjoyed it. And then I saw Bart from Bart's Bookspace talk about The Road. And I was like, you know, I really need to give McCarthy one more shot. He is an author where some of his books I have absolutely loved, All the Pretty Horses, The Road, and then some other books I have not enjoyed at all. The Orchard Keeper is the one that comes to mind where that was a really rough read for me. I did not really enjoy my time with it. Maybe it was the time and the space I was reading it. Who knows? Maybe if I went back to it, I would appreciate it and see it for some kind of masterpiece. But it is kind of interesting to have an author like McCarthy where some of his books are such high highs and then other of them are so low, low, low. I also wasn't the biggest fan of Blood Meridian, though I did appreciate some of the things that were happening with one particular character in that book specifically. So he has been a whirlwind of an author for me and like I said, cannot believe that All the Pretty Horses ended up being a five-star ranking. It, it blew me away. It just made me feel certain you know, the way I want books to make me feel, I felt reading that book, and I'm so glad that I finally got around to reading it. I will be curious to see if I enjoy The Crossing, which is the next book, as much as this one. Uh, from what I can tell, it is an extremely different book than the first one, completely different characters, settings, and everything. But I just, I don't know, I need to at least go forward with the trilogy now, because uh, I just, I love that book so much. So that was a very pleasant surprise, and obviously with it being a two-horse race for 
my book of the month, all the pretty horses kind of ran away with it. It is going to be a book of the year contender for me and getting one finally on my list for this year is really great. So next, before I move on to manga and TV and all that kind of stuff, I just wanted to give a quick personal update. I'll be talking more about this. I'm going to be doing a quarterly review here sometime next week, but this happened in March, so I wanted to go ahead and mention it in my wrap up, but I did compete in my first strongman competition and I was able to win that competition. So it was a really fun experience. Uh, you were about to see something terrifying. I'm gonna throw up on the screen. You were going to see me without an orange shirt on. So, you know, I'm sorry you had to see that and I know it's appalling and I apologize for not sticking to the theme. But I had a really great time with that. It was a lot of fun and that was one of the goals that I had for this year, not to necessarily win, but to just compete in that. It had been a long time since I've competed in strength sports. I had done one powerlifting meet when I was in high school, a really long time ago. And strongman is something that I have more recently gotten into. I really specifically started training for it about two months ago. So it was a really fun time, really enjoyed it. And I, I want to say I will do another one, but we'll see if I actually do. So quickly, I will mention manga slash other reading because I would also throw in some comics if I had read any, but I did not this month. Manga was kind of sparse, didn't read a whole lot of it. A lot of the stuff that I am currently reading has not been releasing on a regular schedule. I think I maybe read one chapter of My Hero. Uh, there's a Boruto chapter I need to read. I read like four chapters of One Piece, but overall not a whole lot. Uh, it's something that I'm very sporadic with. I really only read it when I'm in the mood for it, and that just happens whenever it happens. I don't, it's not something I try to force, so uh, it is not something that I can steadily update. But what I did read, I enjoyed, and I'm looking forward to reading more. I, I would like to push forward a little bit more on One Piece because I'm getting to the part where it's really starting to get to me, and I'm really starting to enjoy it, so I'm like, 160-ish chapters in, so I'm just getting to what most people consider to be some of the best of the story up to this point. So I'm looking forward to marching along with that. Now let's go ahead and move over to TV, movie talk, video game talk, slash random other stuff that I did in the month. And I will start off with, I had the opportunity to listen to a talk from Neil deGrasse Tyson. So that I didn't know exactly where to put that in, but it felt like a show that I went and saw, even though it you know was more of a scientific talk. And that was a really awesome experience. I went and saw that at a local theater to me. And if you have a theater near you, definitely check it. They have all kinds of different events. It's not all just plays. That is an impression I was under. And well, that is definitely not the case because I got to see him talk. It was a lot of fun. So just look for opportunities in and around your city because there are a lot of things out there. I also saw Dune Part 2 this month and after sitting on it for a little while I have got to say that is probably my second favorite movie of all time. I saw it in IMAX on like the best screen I could. I just knew this was going to be the kind of movie you wanted to see in person and it, I felt like I was on Arrakis. I enjoyed my time with that movie immensely. It's I, I have wanted to go back and see it again and I'm not normally the kind of person who feels that way about a movie. I don't normally re-watch movies like that or anything but Dune was just amazing. I know it necessarily wasn't the most faithful adaptation to the book but I feel like a lot of the changes were justified and made sense for the story and the audience that the director, I'm not even gonna to try to say his name because I'll massacre it, uh, but it just felt like it was the story he wanted to tell and stayed as true to Dune the book as he probably could to also make it appeasing to a wide, a wider audience because, you know, let's be honest, some of the stuff that happens in Dune gets out there and gets strange, which I'm all for in the book, but I think it made a lot of sense to kind of dial some of that back, even though the water of life stuff definitely was out there for a lot of people, I'm sure. But yeah, I super enjoyed that movie. One of the best things I've seen in a super long time. So I really can't think of, there's only one movie I would put over it and that's kind of like my, I don't think any movie will ever beat it and that's Pacific Rim. Completely different caliber and class of movie but I just absolutely love that movie. So Doom Part 2 slides into the number two spot for me. On the TV front I have slowly been watching through the live action adaptation of Yu Yu Hakusho. You probably didn't even know it had it because it probably came out similar-ish time to One Piece and it is not nearly on the same budget or caliber as the One Piece live adaptation. Also it's a much less popular series than One Piece but for what it is it's been fine. I give it like a six out of ten maybe it the story is kind of there the characters are kind of there like you can see what's happening you can see the the inspiration that the original anime slash manga is there and it's happening i will say the english dub is rather poor i'm not a big fan of it uh, so if you are going to watch it just watch it with the subtitles don't don't watch the dub version but i have very much enjo been enjoying that 
Uh, the only other TV I watch is me and my girlfriend are so close to being done with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I think we have four episodes left, and we might f end up finishing it this weekend. Uh, I think we would love to do that. But yeah, we are so close. So Nick, if you're watching, I would love to talk to you about Buffy the Vampire Slayer when we finish it up here, hopefully very, very soon. I think that would be a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to wrapping that series up because we have been watching it for like over a year now, so it'll be nice to kind of put a bow on that and move on to something else. I'm not sure what we're going to watch next. We have had some preliminary discussions about what we're actually going to watch, but uh, we'll figure that out when the time comes. On the video game front, I have really just been playing CS2 a little bit, Guild Wars 2 a little bit, but mostly I have playing Genshin Impact. If you're not familiar with that game, think of it as a Breath of the Wild kind of game. It has very similar mechanics to that, but it's a gotcha game, so there are some of those kinds of elements into it if you're not familiar with that kind of game. Don't get into it. It's like gambling, but worse. And with all of that mentioned, I want to give a shout out to some authors who reached out to me. The links will be in the description for their books, and I will have the cover of their books on it, and you can check those out. The first author was Dennis Screamer. Screamer? Sorry, I definitely massacred your last name, but his book was titled Subscription Child. And a quick little synopsis is, Everlife Industries has made even the most minor problems a thing of the past. Among their products, none were more impactful than androids. They were designed to be just about anything, including children, for a fee. Sounds interesting. The, the cover is also very cool, so go ahead and check that out if it speaks to you. Next up, we have from Masha Winter, born in Fury, the nomadic people known as the Rahavi are on the run, and the foe that bears down upon them is far more ruthless and powerful than they can hope to match. And then lastly, we have Anne W.T., the Three Ruined Realms. Everything has its own balance, and it is the sole duty of the divine order of the Osiris Knights to maintain it, yet the order is failing. So like I said, I'll have links to all of that down in the description. If you want to support an indie author, you can check those out. But that is my month of March. It was a very interesting month. Not a lot of reading, but also a lot of reading at the same time. The number of books finished next month is going to seem astronomically high because I'm so close to finishing some of the other books that I have on my list. So it was a great month in some other parts of my life, so that is awesome. But let me know how your month of March was. Did you read anything amazing? Did you have a down month, good month? You know, I'd love to hear it. Let me know what you're reading, all that fun stuff. But as always, I hope you have a good one.